This little dog. Hi guys. I think my house is sinking back into the ground where I raised it out of two years ago. Oh well. <coughs> Such is life in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, it is. It is. Two, is it Monday or Tuesday? It is Monday, May 16, 2020. Oh, good Lord, just throwing a dart here in the mainstream media today. <coughs> and our dart has fallen to the bottom of the ocean. All right, so we have our latest update on the madness of deep sea mining. This is from the Daily Beast. As we walk in, this guy, you know, deep sea mining. <laughs> All you can do is laugh at this point. Uh, we know exactly, humanity knows exactly what we're getting ready to do to the bottom of the deepest oceans on this planet. We just cannot leave it alone. And this is... Uh, Whoever, Ashley Vigil, I love that name, Ashley Vigil, uh, is going to tell us about deep sea mining may uplift clean energy and curse our oceans. Yes, sir. All right. For anybody not uh, aware of what deep sea mining is, let Ashley Vigil explain it to you. <clears throat> Miles beneath our ocean surface, a seemingly alien environment has lain undisturbed for hundreds of millions of years in perpetual darkness except for scattered flickers from bioluminescent creatures, thousands of species of animals, including fish, sea cucumbers, brittle stars, corals, anemones, and sponges evolved to live their lives in the crushing deep sea pressures among smaller creatures like worms and bacteria. The backdrop evolved alongside its inhabitants, slowly locking away carbon dioxide and building up clumps of minerals and metals and it is those metals that have made the deep seabed a target for industrial mining activities that many marine scientists fear will permanently destroy this pristine environment. The looming threat is a bit ironic since one of the incentives to dive deep for these metals is to aid our shift toward clean energy to help heal our planet from climate change. But we need more supplies to fuel this <coughs> green revolution. Batteries for electric vehicles alone require vast amounts of cobalt, manganese, and nickel, and many eyes have turned to the deep seafloor as a source for these valuable metals. Yep, 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 yep. Over the course of millions of years, dissolved minerals and metals precipitated into little potato-sized clumps that stick part way out of the seabed called polymetallic nodules. These rich sources of cobalt, nickel, manganese, and copper are found by the trillions in areas such as the clarion Clipperton Zone, a region of ocean floor about the size of the continental U.S. located between Mexico and Hawaii. These billions of tons of nodules and that one zone alone could be worth trillions of dollars. But many scientists fear the real price we will pay for excavating these metals will be irreparably damaging our oceans. Though we already rely on the ocean for food, 
tourism, biotechnology, coastal protection, pharmaceuticals, and so much more, it is still relatively unexplored, especially the seabed, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. More than 80% of our ocean is still unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored. For most of human history, it has simply been too expensive and too difficult to venture down to these depths. But that has changed in recent years. Yes. Now that we, meaning humans, are developing new machines to harvest deep sea nodules, several large corporations with deep pockets are planning to invest billions of future billions of dollars in future deep sea mining knowing they can expect billions more dollars in profit wow this is real rocket science while we have come up with ways to extract resources from the deep sea Scientists are still working to understand the targeted environments. If we mine the seabed today, we could unwittingly destroy the home of thousands of still unknown species. There's nothing unwittingly about it. This is with our eyes wide open. We know damn well we're going in there where we have no business and we are going to destroy thousands of species we haven't even found out yet so these little greenies can drive around with their damn uh, electric vehicles talking about how they're saving the damn planet. Let's cut the crap what we're talking about here. I mean, this article is pretty good for the mainstream media. They're doing a pretty good job. Make no mistake what they're talking about. They know exactly what they're doing. They don't care. They want the billions of dollars. They're going into the last unexplored ecosystem on this planet so you can drive around in your little electric vehicle uh, claiming you are saving the planet. It is called a bright green lie. This is this electric vehicle crap. Anyway, back to the mainstream media. <clears throat> okay. We could, meaning we will, push these creatures to extinction without ever even knowing their role in the global ecosystem or the possible fallout their absence might cause us. The environmental organization Greenpeace has all also reported that disturbing deep sea sediment could release significant amounts of naturally sequestered carbon, though other scientists anticipate only a small impact. All right, so this is a picture. I have never seen a picture of what they're talking about, these things. This is what it's all about right here, that. It looks like a, it just looks like a bunch of gravel sitting on the, just go down there and pick them up. They didn't look that hard to me. Good Lord, they're just lying there. Just lying there on the bottom of the ocean. I can't believe it took us this long. I figured I'd just go down there and pick up the damn thing. Save the planet. All right. Regardless of the effect on sequestered carbon, the clouds of disturbed sediment released during mining may be disruptive, yes, may be disruptive to both deep sea dwellers and creatures that inhabit shallower depths. A July 2020 paper, which I actually remember going over this, highlights some of the potential fallout from threats to biodiversity to interference with fisheries and the July 2021 paper, yeah, this is 
where that I went over, I remember last summer, suggest that these giant plumes may spread widely in the, wa in the water. Further studies are needed to evaluate long-term ecological effects. No, 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 they're not. No, once again, I need to break in here. No further studies are needed to evaluate the long-term ecological effects. Okay, it, it is not rocket science. We all know what the long-term ecological effects of this are. Sancho Panza can figure this out. Anyway, there are even more unknowns. Is this unknown unknowns or known unknowns? I guess this is those famous unknown unknowns. How much will the noise and light associated with mining activities disturb sea life? How will we monitor such remote activities to keep an eye on the environmental impact? Who will regulate deep sea mining and how and based on what standards? Deep sea mining is currently regulated by the International Seabed Authority, but a growing number of ocean scientists and activists are casting their doubts on the IS, ISA's ability to enact and uphold suitable standards. Do you think so? This is Craig Smith, professor of oceanography at the University of Hawaii. Quote, there is just a justifiable concern that deep sea mining may do more harm than good. Humans have a long history of abusing the ocean through things like pollution and overfishing. We need to be wary that deep sea mining doesn't go the same way, wreaking havoc on biodiversity and disrupting the marine ecosystem, close quote. Yes. Anyway, guys, this goes, uh, anyway, okay, we're just going to keep diving in. So far, the ISA has awarded around 30 exploration contracts to various companies for deep sea mining. Each requires the contractor to conduct multi-year scientific studies to help characterize the targeted regions, the creatures that live there, and the potential impacts of mining activities. Yes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, after, after a brief foray into hopium, how the fox is going to guard the hen house. Still, after all that, the next step is presumably deep sea mining. Few people will disagree that mining operations are environmentally destructive. The question, the question in this case, is whether deep sea mining will have a more drastic impact than increasing current mining efforts, you know, on dry land. You know, this is one of those questions. What is, it's been too long since I've been in logic class. In logic 101, the question is, is it going to kill more of the planet to kill the bottom of the ocean? Or do we just keep on killing the planet on our side? You know, you know this is, uh, so I guess we weigh which is better and we decide which one. I think we all know the answer. We're going to keep killing the planet. We're going to keep digging up the planet to save the planet up here on dry land, and we're going to start digging up the planet to save the planet at the bottom of the deepest oceans on the planet. 
Yes. After all, mining land for the same metals found in deep sea polymetallic nodules comes with a heavy cost too. Yes. Talking about reports in February that drinking water near one of the biggest nickel mines in Indonesia is contaminated with carcinogens. Copper and cobalt mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo have also been in the spotlight in recent years due to human rights issues. The local population is not protected from mining-related toxins, which have been linked to increased rates of birth defects. Researchers have also documented child labor in Congolese cobalt mines. Well, I don't think we're going to have any child labor issues mining uh, cobalt on the bottom of the ocean. All of those reproductive issues and all of that, that'll just be the problem of all those animals down there. You, you, you know? So uh, there, there, there's actually people with a straight face, actually people with a straight face, acting like this is a debate. All right. So here we go. A purported benefit of deep sea mining is that no humans live there. There you go. However, ocean scientists counter that a major difference is that deep sea fauna is highly diverse, largely unknown, and likely endemic, meaning these species may, be, may not be found anywhere else on Earth threatening their environment means putting them at risk of total extinction. And again, let me tell you how much these planet eaters care. <clears throat> but what about on land? Yes. Uh, the, the, e, 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 you know, uh, in, in areas such as Sulawesi, uh, an Indonesian island, nickel mining requires wiping out immense areas of rainforest, which threatens endemic primate species. This is a known threat to biodiversity. Collecting nodules will have a more permanent impact on the environment than currently legal practices such as deep sea trawling. I I anybody uh, who doesn't know what that means, look up videos on deep sea trawling. All right, that is a Sunday walk in the park to what they're talking about. Collecting nodules will have a more permanent impact on the environment than deep sea trawling. Trawling involves weighing down a net and dragging it across the bottom of the ocean to catch fish, scarring the seabed, and often catching enormous quantities of throwaway animals they were not targeting. Since nodules stick out of the sediment, companies could essentially vacuum them up. Yes. However, the hundreds of species that live on the nodules will not recover from for millions of years until the nodules regrow. Yes. Some proponents of deep sea mining also contend that land-based mining is a potential threat to national security. Yes, uh, it, yeah, like it's going to make a real difference, and they they get all you know getting into all of this stuff. Uh, uh, this goes on and on, so I can't tell. Do you notice this subtle shift in this article? It sounds like they're now, uh, the mainstream media is now subtly telling us, 
Oh, maybe it's not so bad. Yes. Uh, so where are we? Some companies are now on track to advance to the next stage later this year, small-scale test mining. But many are calling for a moratorium on commercial deep-sea mining, even though it has not begun yet. The Deep Sea Conservation Coalition has stated that its support of a moratorium hinges on its goal to protect life and ecosystems in the deep sea. But what about the rest of the planet? Yes. Uh, but nearly every party with a stake in this issue seems to acknowledge that mining will proceed in some versions, said marine biologist Smith, quote, if deep sea mining moves forward, well, when it moves forward, it will be very important to proceed slowly until we better understand the impact it has on ocean ecosystems. Once we destroy vast areas of deep seabed habitat, there will be no going back. These ecosystems will take millions of years to recover. There you go. So that is, and if you wonder how many comments on a planet of 8 billion people, how many comments did that article receive? This is a real brain teaser, okay? 8 billion people on the planet. What article was I reading where 321 comments were about baby formula? Okay, the baby formula shortage, I thought women had mammary glands. I thought, I, I don't know, maybe I need to check my third grade uh, I, my, my third grade biology, I thought that humans were mammals. Mammals. Because we, well, some of us, clueless breeders, have mammary glands. We produce our own baby formula. Anyway, 321 comments about the baby formula shortage in this country because women are too busy to use their own mammary glands. 321 comments. How many comments on the story I just read? This is a real brain teaser. If your answer was zero, give yourself a gold star. Nobody gives a damn about the total annihilation of the bottom of this planet's oceans. They're a hell of a lot more concerned about uh, being too busy to breastfeed their own little brats. Uh, I I anyway, anybody uh, trying to understand, sorry. Anyway, I have a factory farmed pork roast in the crock pot that uh, is filling up uh, bugs in a jar with some tasty aromas. So I'm going to go enjoy some factory farmed pig while I still can. I highly suggest uh, you enjoy the deep sea while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog, we are finished. Did you survive? I said, Papa, I did survive, but I'm ready to get off the table, please.